Florida man made it out of Florida. So we are here at 3D Printopia 2024. There are some awesome makers and companies out here. They just opened the door for day two. So let's just go talk to some awesome people and get right into it. Come on. You know, when two of my favorite Germans happen to make their way into the United States, that we gotta come by and see the electroplating god himself, oh. Hendrik, and Jantek, who is known for really kind of telling me exactly everything that I do wrong with my printers because he finds unique ways to make things work way better than they should, and it upsets me with how simple they are. Gentlemen, talk to us about what's going on. Hendrik, you've got some awesome, awesome yeah. electroplated Thank stuff, you. as always. What do we got going on here this, this year? Yeah, I brought some new things like this C3PO. C3PO, yeah. yeah. It took me just 120 hours to, to buff it and sand it first. 120 hours yeah, it, of buffing. It, I mean... What Talk I, about human-cyborg relations. Jeez. Uh, yeah, that's my wife. Oh, my. <laughs> that's my wife. No, and this is gold? This is actually a copper. Okay. Thick, thick layer of copper, like 200 microns. And then I added up uh, palladium. Okay. And then gold. Palladium is for the separation yep. of the gold and the copper. Yeah, they don't like so they don't they, like touching. Yeah, they, they like to mix. Yeah. So I have I end, I will end up having a rosé gold uh, C3PO. Nobody wants that. So no. it is one of those things where, yeah, okay, it, it should look like this, but it's 120 hours of buffing, yeah. a 200 <laughs> micron, it, a layer, a 3D printed layer thick of copper, then palladium, then gold. Correct. How do you do a part this big? Oh, I have a big vat for okay. that. Yeah, I have a 50 liter vat. How much is that in gallons? I don't know. Full of sulfuric acid. Oh yeah. Just... Yeah. Well, why not? No and problem. Then I put it in there and then after four hours it comes out like, yeah, like, like, like this. Not at all, but I have to sand and buff after that. A lot. Yeah. Yep. You should check this out. Flexible TPU, yeah, and you can electroplate TPU as well, and it becomes really rigid after that. And it's quite a bit heavier. It's got a lot of copper on it. Yeah, it's a thinner, it's thinner, it's a thinner print. How thin is the coating on this, you think? Uh, 200 microns. I can see where people are touching it. I can yeah. see where it's starting to- Yeah, uh, yeah, oxidize. Oxidize, yeah. yeah. People like to touch that. They do, even though there's one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> do not touch signs yeah. on the table. We don't do a lot of reading here. It's, it, it, it's yeah. you know, don't, don't worry yeah. about it. Instincts kick in when they see the blue. Ooh, shiny, yeah. ooh, shiny, yeah, yeah. ooh. Shiny. Yeah, yeah, it does. Is this your latest big project or what, yes. what's the big project you're working on right now? I'm working on um, car emblems, actually. Yes. Because that is requested a lot. I don't want to spoil everything. But okay, there that's fair. Some... And what, do you want people to follow you on Instagram, yeah. YouTube? Where, where, where can people find the work that yeah. you're working on? You can find me on uh, YouTube. Uh, I have a channel, it's Hen Hendrik 3D Printing or Hendrik Electroplating 3D Prints. Awesome. Yeah. You're gonna find him, it'll be pretty obvious. It's like the one guy that actually knows what the hell he's doing when it comes to electroplating and does it really, really well. But speaking of doing things really, really well and making me get a little bit upset for the, the little secrets and things that you find, we have Jan from Jantech. I'm getting that right, correct? Yeah, Okay, right. awesome. I wanna say so people are like, oh, it's Jantech. No, it's Jan, it's German, yeah. get it right. So we have Jan from Jantech who blew my mind specifically with this piece. This is ABS, but this first layer, it's not ABS. Jan, what, what is this? No. The first layer is PLA, mm -hmm. and all this came with my recent video in which I tried combining different filaments. Yep. So I took PLA, PGG, ABS, and TPU, and combined them in all possible ways, tiered them apart with my tensile tester, and yeah, analyzed which filaments stick well together and which do not. And ABS and PLA stuck surprisingly well together, and then I noticed, okay, PLA, you can print it on a cold yeah. paper bed or 60 degrees Celsius. It doesn't warp. It doesn't warp. Yep. ABS does warp and you need like 110 it degrees light. Yeah. yeah. So I came up with this idea of printing a thin layer of PLA and then changing the filament to ABS and printing the rest. And it turned out to work quite good. Just it's a random those, idea. I feel like that was one of those like, oh my God, we've been doing it the hard way for years. One layer of PLA, switch to ABS, finish the print in ABS, 
And if you can get the same color, you won't even know. But now it also gives you the ability to do dual color. And the part is beautiful. There's not a dime of warping. Was this on an open air printer and all of that? Yeah, open air printer with 65 degrees says it's bad all the time. This is a warping test. Okay. It, it warped a little, warped a little bit. But if you print it from regular ABS, it warps like three centimeters or so yeah. more. But like that is, that's trying hard, right? That's, that's really putting it to the test. Yeah. yeah. That is really not that bad. Yeah. That is so freaking cool, dude. Thank so you. What, what else are you working on right now? I'm working on more in-depth filament tests, like the Fiberon PPS. I okay. don't know if you've seen that. Yep. It claims temperature resistance up to 300 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. quite a lot. And I'm building the V-Core 4 from Redwood. I want to build a V-Core 4 so bad. How's that build going? It's going good. It's even easier than the V-Core 3 and it's a really fun build. Really enjoyed it. I really like with that V-Core 4 that you can start with a base machine and then slowly upgrade it. Yeah, upgrade to the hybrid and the IDEX. That's really cool. It's like, okay, cool. You can start with the, the base model and then you can easily add the, the extras onto it without a bunch of extra work. It's like it's designed that way. Yeah. Not many companies do that. Jan, where can the folks at home find you? You can find me on YouTube. Jantek Engineering is my English channel. Just Jantek is the German channel with English subtitles. And I'm on X at Jan underscore tech. So I want to point that out. You're, you're doing videos in both English and German. Yes. So you're filming double the amount of most content creators. You're putting yeah. out videos that are absolutely stellar. Thank you. <laughs> and you're doing them twice. Yeah. I'm doing the voiceover twice and the editing, but yeah. That's still a lot of work. So <laughs> whether you happen to like English or maybe you want to learn some German with English yes. subtitles, there's an opportunity for you there to learn a new language. Go check out Yontech and of course, check out Hendrik as well. These guys are doing awesome work. Some of what to me embodies the really cool things that we do here in this industry for 3D printing. And I know I said it back in Smurf, but do you want to see me do more electroplating stuff? and? play with toxic chemicals, because Florida man definitely won't ever do that wrong. And do you guys want to see us put some of these things to the test too, and try to see how crazy of a part that we can print before it starts to warp? Let us know down in those comments, but check out both these guys. They are doing awesome things. We have a ton more coming at you here from 3D Printopia 2024, so stay tuned. On to the next one. This road cone is so heavy. It is heavy. Uh, I did 153. Uh, yeah. Well, you probably will do more because fudge factor is a little off now. But great. That's all. I just yeah. I, I need to be stronger than last. You will. Time. You will be stronger than last time. More. That's than all likely. that I need, man. It don't. Look. Yeah. We'll, we'll edit that out. Editors, cut that part out. There's a leaderboard, and since you're going first, you might make it on the leaderboard. <laughs> Wait, so, oh, hey, I'll be number one on the leaderboard. Let's go. Yeah. Florida man, you ready? Uh, define ready. Countdown will start. Come on, pull. No, it's, it says peak force is 109. I think 109 is, kilos? Yeah. I like this fudge factor this time. <laughs> I think the display's a little frozen, but. <laughs> Jeez. I'm going to one handle. No, Come stop on. it. You Jeff, can... get back here. <laughs> Jeff, no. Jeff, Ugh. you're under arrest. Florida man says so. <laughs> I have the traffic cone of safety. Oh, great. No, God. Oh, oh, jump. Four. oh no! <laughs> <sighs> That's it. Yep, I'm out of shape. Well, hey, you had a peak force of 109.6 kilograms. I'll take that. And uh, looks like you had what, 21, uh, 21,952 newton seconds. So number of one, <laughs> right? Oh, yep. Kyle test. Yeah. Wait, Kyle tested better than me. Crap. Yeah, he had a better he had a better uh, peak force. Well, he works for you, so that yeah. doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Woohoo! All right.
Oh, my head feels so much better. I'm sure. We did it, Florida man on the top. Yep. Ignore the numbers, just see number one. Just see number one. That's all, yeah. Ignore everything else, just number one is what matters. Yeah. <laughs> so Kyle yeah. had a much higher impulse. Yeah. Well, but he, he lasted had, less he had, time. He actually had a lower impulse. You had a higher impulse, so you have 21,940 newton seconds. He's only 10,000 newton seconds, but he had a higher peak force. So impulse is force over time. <laughs> so what you're saying is, I may not be as powerful, but I last longer. Yes. <laughs> you heard it here first. And you have some of the coolest freaking helmets, dude. Thank you. Those yeah. are so sick. Jeff is just the coolest. Yeah. So Jeff's got a few upgrades. Well, other than other yeah. than your uh, your yeah. vision system here, yep. he's Bo got uh, yeah. more measurement. What more, else has he more got? More measurement. That's about it. I mean, we have the vision system for recording the, the shows, and then we have uh, you know the whole new display system. Right. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's it's kind of the same thing. A little bit more showmanship. <laughs> and literally, for those that don't know, that is the only thing. Yeah, there's a safety cable. Ignore the safety cable. But that is the only thing that I'm pulling against this giant fanic robot arm with googly eyes because googly eyes make everything better they do and for those that are super curious it is an s420 high w he's so cool and of course jeff means just enough physical force that's right my name is jeff and requires an entire pallet jack worth of equipment to run them <laughs> the last year we, we, we talked about this being the craziest marketing expense that i think i've seen out of any 3d printing company plus what do you do for marketing oh yeah we we have a giant robot that plays tug of war yep which is super cool. Yeah. So. I mean, what better way to demonstrate the, the power of Gloop than, uh, you know, fighting a giant robot? Jeff always seems to be the one that wins. Yes. Yeah. We haven't had anyone beat Jeff and no one's broken the shackle, so. All right, I am, I am out of breath, but that was the most recent Florida man versus robot here. We, we actually, did pretty good. Yeah, I'm a, I mean, hopefully the fudge factor's not too much, <laughs> but based on the numbers, and we all know numbers never lie. Nope. We did almost 100 pounds more than last year. Almost, so. yeah. You know what, I'll take it. I, that's, a, that's a win in my book. Damn it, that means I have to do better next year. Next year, yeah. Oh God, all right, so I gotta get just bulky or yep. really heavy, one of the two. Well, one of the two, yeah. <laughs> or really grippy shoes. I did the best I could there. I thought he was gonna rip the damn soles off my feet. <laughs> Jeez. As always, Andrew, you know, you guys, you guys put on a hell of a show. Thank you. Yeah, Jeff is truly a, um, a sight to see. Yes. <laughs> oh God, I am so out of breath. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Yep. Oh, crap. <laughs> You can't do it! Outside of 3D Printopia, we have my buddy Paul with Transpiration Turning who makes some absolutely beautiful wood-turned objects, but does it a little bit differently because you're not just using a traditional lathe. That's correct. Just to, at the start, Every, all the bowl shapes themselves yeah. are done normally on the lathe with hand tools. Right. So it's the decoration that I do afterwards, and I do that with a bolt-on CNC uh, for the wood lathe. So this is a, a creation of mine that allows me to do various types of embellishments mm -hmm. on a bowl surface once it's completed using either a router or a laser or a variety of other things in order to sort of up the level, uh, the, if you will, for the certain bowls. And you can get absolutely beautiful detail. This is a epoxy resin inlaid into a CNC routed design, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and this is one of the places where uh, 3D printing comes in and helps out quite a lot mm -hmm. because one of the things I have the ability to do is I can actually probe the, the profile of a bowl. So I use a little probe and I can come in and I can measure the surface at various positions and then I get the contour and I can generate an STL for that. And so I can use that STL to do a, a vase mode print. And for an example like this, in order to pour that resin, I would just do this, put it over, uh, seal the bottom, and then I can just pour resin in that and then turn everything away. And I've, I've got that the nice surface from, from That's doing absolutely that. beautiful. It's funny because a lot of you have used Paul's work before, but you might not know the man. <laughs> if you've ever used the cancel object feature in Octoprint or any of the modern solutions, they all stemmed from Paul's cancel object plugin for Octoprint. So yeah, 
you all should be thanking Paul in the comments. Well, and, and anytime somebody mentions Octoprint, you should thank Gina That's for, fair. for developing Gina Octoprint too. in the first place fair. And, and support her. But sticking with that theme, um, a lot of what I do on this machine, it uses Octoprint. So okay. I've generated plugins for Octoprint in order to be able to make this as easy to use as possible. Mm -hmm. For those you know, that know CNC, you can use any just normal three-axis cam software right. to generate G-code, and then you bring that into Octoprint, and then I've got the manipulations that you need in order to convert it into the rotary axes directly into Octoprint. Paul is a genius, and to, to the point of, you're a university professor as well. Your entire life has been inspiring and educating people. You've enabled all of us to be more effective in multi-object 3D printing. And now you're going into the dead wood carcass level of, 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 of things and making chips out of wood. Yeah, I think there's a natural progression. Once your hair gets to a certain level of gray, you, uh -huh. gotta, you gotta transition into woodworking. So that's that's what happened to me. So I, I've moved, moved in that direction. Uh, so I'm not doing as much 3D printer development kind of stuff anymore, but you know I'm still trying to um, solve problems. Yeah. Right? That's all. That's all I ever really tried to do is solve problems. So as you've shown, there's a lot of crosstalk between the two industries. Yeah, yeah, where, sure. you know, the, you're running Octoprint, you're running plugins for Octoprint. I mean, you developed them yourself, but you're running plugins for Octoprint because it's something that you know about. You're yep. you're knowledgeable in it and you're comfortable. Yeah, and, and that kind of cross-pollination that you get, I think we'll start to see that more and more in other, yeah. in other sort of automation systems as well. And that's exciting to see. I, I really do like to. I love wood turning, but lathes are one of the few tools that just legitimately scare me because, especially when I have the longer hair, I'm like, nope, 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 I'm not 10 feet, 10 feet distance, man. I, but the work that you do is absolutely beautiful. We have a few of Paul's pieces at our facility, and every now and then Paul ends up with some rejects and he gives them out to people. And we, <laughs> we end up with a couple and they're just, to him, they're just rejects. To me, they're like, these things are beautiful, they're amazing, and I use them all the time. Well, fun functional is the important thing. So Incredibly functional. You know, there's a difference between having something that's aesthetically uh, up to my standards versus something that's being functional. So that's I'll, fair. I, I'm very happy to give all my friends those functional yeah. um, pieces that might not be aesthetically up to they're it. Just beautiful, man. Like, with the, with the bow ties. Yeah, so that's actually really what I use this machine so for the cool. most. Uh, because you you need to be able to repair those if you're yep. gonna, if that's going to be a functional bowl. Oh, and you've got your logo on the bottom. Yes, it's laser, that's cool. lasered in on the bottom there. Now is that done? On no, the that, as that, well? that's actually it's a lot easier to, and faster to do that on on a, another laser. That's so, fair. That's so fair. I don't because I don't have to set the machine up in order to just do all those, and so I do a bunch of them at time. Piece. Uh, one of the things I've done recently is I can also use the machine for doing threading. So I can I can actually generate and cut the threads on the machine directly Wait, into the um, wood. So. Dude, those are really clean threads too. Yeah, they're, they're not too And you bad. got them properly tapered so they don't yep. easily cross thread. Yeah, they work pretty nicely. Should I should I run it? Should I, should I make it do something? You're asking if I want to see it do something. The answer is always yes. All right, I'll make right. it do something. Answer is always yes. Oh, this is just too cool. It really is. Guys, we absolutely love seeing technology used in a cool way to create awesome artwork. And if you want to see more of what Paul's doing, you can check out Transpiration Turning. We'll link to it in that description. And you also sell some of this stuff locally here in the, in the Maryland area, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm not like big into selling things, but right. I do a market once a month at a store called Plants Alive, which is a nursery. Okay. They, they've got a maker's market. And so I do that once a month to uh, fund new tool purchases. So if you want to get a chance to potentially purchase some of Paul's wares and you happen to be in the area, go check them out. Because honestly, th these are pieces of art that I think any maker <laughs> would be honored to have in their house. Paul, thank you so much for bringing this out, showing us how it works. It is it, it's incredible. It's totally incredible. Thanks, Grant. And yeah. it's great to see you again. Oh, as always. always, man. So much more happening here at 3D Printopia. Not any more of the woodworking. That's why we wanted to make sure that we got Paul in here because he's a one of a kind maker, literally one <laughs> of a kind maker. That's right. That's all we have for you today on this one. Again, check out everyone in this video. Links in that description. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. No! 
That's my pot pie. Pick me back up, Jeff. There it is. Thank you, sir. You're a gentleman and a scholar.